What's up, you guys? It's your girl Lucy Smash back at it again, and this video is a transcript of the appeal hearing that I did on April 17, 2020. Now, I'm putting out videos like this as a series as far as the unemployment, um, unemployment information to the world. A lot of things that you might search or might look for as far as unemployment is only things that you're going to see that the news is putting out. But you're not really seeing me the videos of what other people or what people are actually going through through the appeal process or any hiccups they might have had in the process of trying to get their unemployment benefits. So this video is a continuation of the videos that I've been putting out. Like my video like Where's My Money Smokey or you know TWC with that bullshit you know stuff like that so this is a just a continuation of the series of my unemployment benefits and yeah this video is about almost 30 minutes long you guys so if you don't necessarily want to watch the video thank you so much for actually tuning in up to this point but yeah the video it will be mostly transcribed up to a certain point and the rest of it will be towards the end of me talking so I just wanted to give a quick little insight to what this video is about. So stay tuned and keep watching. Hello. As yes, this is she. This is hearing officer Zacharias with the Texas Workforce Commission. Are you ready for your hearing? Yes. Do you have anyone else participating on your behalf? No. One moment, let me get the employer on the line. Okay. Who's calling please? Calling from the Texas Workforce Commission for a hearing. Is she available? Good afternoon. Ms. Constable? Yes, good afternoon. Good afternoon. This is Hearing Officer Zacharias with the Texas Workforce Commission. Are you ready for your hearing? Yes, sir. Looks like Ms. Spencer is going to be participating. Will there be any other anyone else other than the two of you? Mm, no. I missed them. I'm sorry? I, I, there's another employee here, but he has to man the phone. Yes, very okay. clean, One moment. So. Mm -hmm. One moment. If necessary. Mm -hmm. Hello? Winston Hello? Spencer? Yes, sir. This is Hearing Officer Zacharias with the Texas Workforce Commission. Are you ready for your hearing? Yes, sir. I have Ms. Constable on the line. Do you know of anyone else, Ms. Spencer, that's going to participate? Anyone else that's yes. participating on behalf of the employer is my question. Oh, okay. No, sir. All right, we're now on the record in appeal number one being conducted on Friday, April 17, 2020 at 2.04 p.m. via a conference call originating from the Texas Workforce Commission in Dallas, Texas. This hearing came about from an appeal filed on March 25, 2020 by the claimant to a determination dated March 23, 2020. That determination ruled that the claimant was disqualified from receiving benefits under Section 207 Point zero four five of the act because the claimant voluntarily quit the last work without work connected good cause. That determination also ruled that there would be no chargeback to the employer's account. This hearing is being recorded to preserve the record, so if we get disconnected, just hang up and I will call you back. This is an administrative hearing, and as such, we will not follow strict courtroom procedure. Present on behalf of the claimant is at present on behalf of the employer. Sent Central Home Health Service of Texas Incorporated is Cordia Constable. Ms. Constable, what is your job title? Office Manager. Also present is Winston Spencer. Ms. Spencer, what is your job title? Administrator. Since you have more than one person participating on your behalf, you must designate a primary representative who will be the spokesperson for your party and is responsible for questioning your witnesses, the other party's witnesses, and examining any documents. The primary representative may also testify and will be responsible for adding any additional comments later. Who will be the employer's primary representative? Cordia Constable. Now, guys, let me start off by saying the person that actually hired me was Windsor Spencer. She's an older-looking lady. This constable woman and Miss Spencer is supposed to be sisters, right? Miss Spencer is the one that owns the company. Miss Spencer is the one that will come out to your house, sign, get all the documents that needs to be signed. Basically, the person that comes out to get the contract and make sure the contract for that patient and everything is together. She's the only person that I ever spoke to. So why would she 
let Cordia Constable designate any type of conversation with me, with the TWC personnel, hearing officer, whoever the fuck you supposed to be. Why would you be the one talking when I never had any conversation with you? Never had any communication as far as my job criteria, when I first applied for the job, when I did the videos or anything like that, answering the questions, got my paycheck, anything. I never spoke to you. So why are you speaking on the behalf of Central Home Health? Just because you the office manager, we never had no conversation. Any conversation that I ever had with anybody at the company was Windsor Spencer. She is the owner of the company. She is the one that hired me. She is the one that gave me the documents to sign and everything. Let's proceed. Ms. Constable, the Texas Workforce Commission employer account number we have on file is 02-51877-8. Do you know if that's a correct account number for the employer? appears to be correct. On appeal, we have two issues. First is whether the claimant was separated from her last work as a result of work-connected misconduct or a voluntary quit without work-connected good cause. Second is whether the employer's account should be charged back as a result of the claim. Okay, so let me just read off how we got to this point, okay? So on March 23rd, 2020, a TWC representative called me and was asking me some questions to verify if I should be granted for me to get my benefits or not, right? Now, let's point it out that I had already had my setup for unemployment in the system since February 24, 2020. I didn't get a call back until March 23rd, 2020, right? So I'm going to read off what was said. This is all the things. This is, this is exactly what is in the system that she took as the reason why I couldn't get my benefits. She asked me, why did I leave my last job? I said, yes, I did decline the job on 120, 2020. So January 20th, 2020. Because I do not have a valid driver's license, which is true. And I don't have transportation, which is true. All I'm doing right now is the bus because it's free because of COVID-19. We do not have to pay money. And if I have a little change of, you know, two, three dollars, five dollars, ten dollars to get in a lift to go to the grocery store or something like that, then that's what I'm going to use. But as of right now, everybody know that they waiting on stimulus checks. Now, thank God I did receive a stimulus checks, but of course I paid up my bills. I got more groceries and stuff like that. So I don't necessarily have a job to go to, so I don't necessarily have to worry about transportation right now. So this is in the beginning of the year, way before the whole COVID-19 situation happened. Everything got shut down. People lost their jobs and stuff like that. So uh, Windsor Spencer was trying to give me two locations, one that was in Tomball, Texas, and one that was in Kingwood, Texas. I don't have a car. I cannot get to those locations. The bus is only going to take you so far. If I do not have money to get in the Lyft or Uber, I cannot get to those locations. I do not have a valid driver's license. I do not have a car. Therefore, I'm going to decline those positions, right? Okay. What prompted this decision? I said I don't have a valid driver's license. I do not have transportation. What was the reason given to the employer? Same. I do not have a valid driver's license. I do not have transportation. So she took that and said that I am not eligible eligible to receive benefits because my reasoning was not valid enough for why I declined the position that they were trying to give me. For a work at home, I mean a home health job, home health aid, to go to someone else's house, an elderly person. Now, as I said, she called me in March 23rd, 2020. So we already know COVID-19 as of this point right now is already full in effect. Everything was shut down. You know, we can't be around certain elderly people, as they say, because, you know, they might get sick and stuff like that. So even though I declined this job in January of 2020 I was still looking for work at that time I have so many pages as far as 
jobs that were denying me, saying that, oh, you know, they went with other candidates and stuff like that. So you mean to tell me that this wasn't a valid reason on why I can't get my benefits? Let's continue the right to testify and to call witnesses and question them. You also have the right to question the other party's witnesses. You have the right to present documents for evidence, but please do not refer to documents not previously disclosed, and please do not prompt the testimony of any witnesses. If the party has more than one person participating as a witness, either party may invoke the rule. That means that the additional witnesses will be restricted from hearing testimony until it is their time to testify. Following the hearing, I'll be issuing a written decision. You will have 14 calendar days from the date the decision is mailed, not from the date you receive it, to file an appeal if you disagree with my decision. So it's very important that I have a correct mailing address for both parties. Now, I don't want y'all to think that I'm going to drag y'all along through that whole long process, did y'all? <sighs> you guys, from this point, right from right now, from where I just stopped at it, I want you to just see how an appeal hearing is set up. So now I'm going to skip to the point of where we get to the nitty gritty. Like, what is the point of this hearing? You know, like that. now in this video, you will also see that I have certain emojis, like a clown emoji. You'll see a Pinocchio emoji. You'll also see the little devil emoji. The clown emoji is for the constable woman. The Pinocchio is for... Spencer, this company called Central Home Health Services in Houston, Texas, you guys, do not, I don't care if you are a home health agent, do not work with this company because they will sit here and lie and try to make it seem like you are in the wrong, that you are always doing something, they never do no wrong themselves, like nothing, they doing everything by the book, that's that's the type of company that they are. So I'm putting this information out for not only unemployment, information because when you look up unemployment information online or on youtube you're only going to find what the news is putting out there what they want you to see but you don't really get to see how many people or the real people that's actually going through these hearing processes or going through real issues with unemployment you don't really see many videos like that because they trying to over bombard you with the stuff that they want you to see as far as the news but just like me when I was searching for things for unemployment, I couldn't really find certain things of, you know, people were speaking about their experience, you know, when they had to go through an appeal process. So in this video, you will see the transcription of what he was saying in the video. But towards this part, I'm going to just go ahead and keep it going. And then I'm going to interject in certain points. This constable. Cordia constable, C-O-R-D-I-A. C-O-N-S-T-A-B-L-E, October 50, 1960. And Miss Spencer. Winsome Spencer, W-I-N-S-O-M-E-S-T-E-N-C-E-R, date of birth, 4-13-1956. All right, I'm going to start by asking Miss Davis a few background questions about her employment with this company, then I'm going to ask one of you on the employer side if you agree with her answers so if you will both please pay close attention to her answers i don't know who i'll start with then we'll get into more of the details of the separation at that point i'll start with the party who it appears initiated the separation so miss davis what were your dates of employment with this employer when did you start and when did you stop i started june 14th 2019 the last what year i'm sorry what year 2019. Okay. And your last day worked? The last day I worked was for the patient Terrence Martindale. That was January 9th, 2020. Between the time you worked your last day for the employer and the time that you filed your initial claim for benefits, did you work for anyone else? No. So you did not file uh, until the end of February, the, the week of February the 23rd. So between January 9th and that week of February the 23rd, you didn't do any kind of work at all? No. Why did you wait so long? Now, aren't you the Texas Workforce Hearing Officer? If you are the one that's supposed to be grilling me to try to make it seem like, oh, I'm going to see, you know, if you're actually, you know, deemable for your benefits when you got money sitting there, but I'm just not going to give it to you. 
wouldn't you already know this information? Like, shouldn't you have a document that's already set up with all the questions that you're going to ask and the answers that should already be there for certain items? Why are you asking me why did I wait so long to file for unemployment benefits? When I tried to apply for it ahead of time, they called me back instantly and was like, well, no, you actually have to wait a year from the day that you actually apply. From the, like, let's say last year I applied for benefits February 24, 2020. When that money runs out, I have to wait till February 4th, February 24th, 2021 to apply for benefits again, you know. So as a hearing officer, when you know that, Oh, okay. Right. So I had. To so what? Me. What was your? Uh, what was your last job title with this employer? Uh, home health aide. Who was your immediate supervisor? Uh, Cordia Constable, I believe. What was your ending rate of pay? Eight dollars and thirty cents. Did you quit? Were you laid off, or were you fired? Neither. I'm still employed with the company. That are you still working? Yes. All right. So basically, you just get a gist of the bullshit of the hearing and basically how he was asking certain questions. You can hear his tone and his voice. And I'm not going to lie. At the time, I was very nervous because I was getting pissed off. And one thing about me is that when I get mad, I start to get nervous. My voice starts getting a little squeaky, you know, kind of a little shaky and shit like that because I know I'm about to fucking blast off. But because I can't see these people and I want to fight these. Excuse my French. You know, I had to channel it a certain way. So to hear what she was saying, basically, he, you see, he asked me all that. He asked, did Central Home Health agree with my answer? She said no. My last day of work was actually January 8th. Like, bitch, it don't matter. January 8th, January 9th. He left the house January 9th. So I said January 9th. Okay, whatever. She was not my immediate supervisor, which was true, because I don't know why the hell I said that she was my immediate supervisor. I thought in my mind that I was saying Spencer, but instead I said constable. I don't know what, like I said, I was nervous. I was pissed off, and my mind was just elsewhere. She also lied and said that in her handbook, okay, in their Citra Home Health handbook, that it says that anybody that comes to work for them, of course, to go and, you know, be at these clients, the, the elderly people's houses, to, you know, do home health work with them, like, you know, help them do certain things around the house and stuff like that. That's what an HHA is. She said that in her handbook... It says that the employees need to have valid transportation. That's what she said, right? <laughs> but see, one thing that my mama taught me is documentation rules the nation. Okay? This right here, what does that say? Central Home Health 2019? Oh. Oh, okay. Paycheck stubs, what? Oh, okay. Time sheets, all that. Like, what? What are you talking about? Huh. The handbook, right? Huh. Okay. Of anything of a handbook. Now, I can go through all my uh, folders with places that I work for, and I've always got an employee handbook. This is the only thing I have. And what does that say? Patient handbook? Mm-hmm. $8.30 an hour? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's patient handbook right there. Yeah. HHA information, release of information, you know, HIPAA laws, all that information right there. Mm-hmm. Consent of treatment, consumers' rights and responsibilities, prepared guides on, you know, what to do if certain things you need to wear gloves and stuff like that. Where where is my employee handbook? Where where is it say in this handbook? If I'm an employee, you should you too busy want to chit chat talk about my hair and my earrings and shit like that, Spencer. You ain't give me no employee handbook, Spencer. I read the damn all these damn documents that you the motherfucking gave me. 
I read all that. It ain't got nothing in here that that's employee handbook. So how you gonna lie like that? Now let me tell y'all how stupid it is for them to say something like that. Because let's use the example as most people might know, as most people might not know. I used to work at Walmart for two and a half years. From August 2nd, 2016 to June 12th, 2019. Okay? Two and a half years. So, clearly Walmart is a building, right? It's a building. Everybody know that, right? Everybody? Okay. Walmart is a building, right? Okay, so... Clearly, if I know that I want to get to Walmart on Silver Road, Walmart on 290, Walmart on uh, 249, Walmart on West Road, I clearly know that that's a building. So I know that that building is not going to move anywhere. I know that it's not going to go to different places. I know that it's different locations. I know that if I want to work at West Road... I got to have transportation to get to West Road. I know if I want to work at 249 location, I got to have transportation to get to 249 location. There are certain buses that can go down there by 249 location. That'll make it easier for me, right? Okay. Central Home Health is a temporary agency for one. Central Home Health is a company that sends out, let's say, people like me to, let's say, Miss Johnson House. She might stay on Little York. Let's say uh, Miss Robinson House. Let's say she stay on Alabama. Let's say uh, Miss Williams. She stay over there by 249. Clearly, I know that if I want to get to certain positions that you're offering me, I got to have transportation, right? But just like, just like she did the last time when we did our hearing, she had the audacity, the constable bitch, she had the audacity to feel like, oh, well, since you act like you don't know certain things or want to follow certain rules, she actually sent me, and let me see if I can, yep, here you go. She actually sent me a document, priority mail, y'all. She literally sent a document that I signed. Now, this is last year in November of 2019. Remember I was telling y'all, about how I had to go through that process, it was with the same company, Central Home Health. When Terrence, my stepfather that I was working for, he went to the hospital. They wouldn't give me my money. The last little change, like $1,000 that was left on my account. Yeah, all that. See, that was with this company, the same company. So after he came from the hospital, I continued to work for him up until January before he left. So she literally sent a document that was saying, um... Basically, the copyright of the do's and don'ts, if a patient is in the hospital, I am required to let the home health agency know that that person is in the hospital. Why do I need to do that? Aren't y'all the company? Shouldn't y'all, y'all have the contract? So y'all should be the ones that keep an update on the goddamn patient that's in the hospital. So, yes, I had my signature on here that I actually signed that in this handbook. Okay, I'll give it to you, but at the end of the day, I still want my money. I still got my thousand some dollars that was left on that account. So, what was you doing? Like, what, 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 was, what was all that about? Like, you trying to flex? Okay, so why you flex this time? Why you ain't send me no uh, priority one day mail about transportation? Why I ain't getting no document like that? We did this hearing on. April 17, 2020. It's now what? May 23rd, 2020? And I ain't get no document. So use a motherfucking lie. To sum it up, you guys, and I'm just ending with this. When I got my decision on after we did that appeal, he basically said that according to the commissioner's president, a claimant who has restricted his or her his or her hours of work will be considered to have committed actions that constitute a voluntary quit without good connected cause with the work. So, as I said in my other video, he used the example of, let's say somebody is a barber, like they cut hair. Let's say that person says, you know, hey, they go to their boss, they say, hey, I can't work full-time hours anymore, I need to work part-time. So, the manager says, okay, I will let you continue to work part-time, up until 
I found a replacement that I could put somebody in for full time. Once that manager finds somebody for full time, excuse me, guys. Once that manager finds somebody that is a full time candidate, that part time employee is not fired. TWC will say that that person that was a part time employee restricted themselves from having hours. Therefore, they got fired for their own reasons. Therefore, you restricted yourself from hours. Therefore, you ain't going to receive no benefits. So that's what they tried to say that I did. I restricted myself from hours because I don't have a valid driver's license. Because I got a ticket on my name because you were just being dumb. You should have had a seatbelt on when you were sleeping in the back seat. That's your fault. You ain't got no transportation. Why you ain't got no money? Why you ain't got no job? See, that's why you're in this position right now. You're trying to get unemployment benefits because you ain't got no job. You're just trying to sit at, sit at your house. You don't want shit. You ain't trying to do nothing with your life. What the fuck am I in college for? What the fuck was I staying at Walmart for two and a half years for? What the fuck was I applying for unemployment benefits for? What am I going out because my mama is sick, her back is hurting, she got this hernia, she got a lot of things going on with her body. Why am I the one going out and getting groceries? Why am I bringing the groceries upstairs? Why, why, why you ain't got no business? Why, I mean... Why you like where your money at? You you twenty four years old. You ain't got nothing going on for yourself. Like what you doing with your life? This is basically the way like his attitude was acting towards me. Now I know a lot of people in this world don't all have all their shit together, and I'm not sitting here trying to say you know all these opportunities were handed to me because as soon as I left high school, I got into college instantly. And I'm still in college right now. What would have changed? So don't try to. I'm and I'm I'm saying this on TWC to them and that goddamn Central Home Health. Don't try to prosecute me to make it seem like I'm not trying to do what I need to do to help me and my mother get to a position where I know we can be at. I'm I'm gonna go get her, as I say. If you can see that as I said in the minute of my videos, I am a go get her. If I gotta do what I gotta do, whether I'm tired or not, I'm gonna do what I need to do. So, as I said, he did he denied me, said that as the claimant is disqualified from receiving benefits, the employment's the employer's account will not be subject to charge or whatever the fuck that means. So basically, overall he denied me. He was he still denied me. So, thank God that I have the mother that I have. <laughs> okay? She helped me write off my third appeal letter to go to the appeal tribunal upscale. So, there's the appeal, uh, the general appeal people, and then there's the appeal tribunal that's higher up. So, we already sent our documents out to them. And we are just waiting a response. Like I said, I sent that out April 29th, 2020. So, yeah, we just waiting on a response. So, you guys, I know this video was quite long, but I hope that you were well educated as far as how my unemployment situation is going. And not really just my unemployment situation. I know it's a lot of people out in the world right now that is going through this situation also. So, I would hope that everybody wins their case. As I said before, you know, we're going to beat this. We're going to fight this. Because at the end of the day, there's there's something out there for everybody that we could be able to make money. If these people act like they don't want to give us no stimulus check, no grant money, or whatever the case may be. There's always equal opportunities for everybody. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video today. If you did, stay this far in the video. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you next time. Bye.